Yes. Yeah, just a very short introduction. I think most of you guys have seen Andres already because he came. Uh, is it twice, Andres? Yeah, you came to our Java user group once in real life, once virtually. So it's Correct. a first time today. And uh, yeah, so uh, uh, as we said before, Andres is a Java champion, uh, worked for many cool companies, currently working for Oracle, uh, very involved in all the build systems like Maven, Gradle, and so on. And currently working on a new very cool project called JRelease. And uh, he's going to present uh, to us about JRelease. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, and, and everyone else for joining us today. I'm going to click on the share screen button. And we have about 45 minutes before we get the second speaker, Dimitri, who, who has joined us already. Uh, so we have plenty of content for you today, and feel free to ask any questions at any time. Okay, here we go. And click on play so we can see the slides. Great. So, Jerry Lisa. Now, um, the thing is that we as Java developers, or as developers in regular, uh, what we do is uh, it can be said that we move data or translate data into pixels. And, and translate those pixels back into data. And in order to do that, we create programs. And these programs or binaries have to be released and have to be sent and being available to our users. And there are many ways to do this, right? So here we go. So my name is Andres. I like open source, like uh, Michael said, and uh, I also love the Groovy. So why did I start this particular tool? which is pretty much close to a year ago. So here was my situation a few years ago. I write tools because I want to. This is something that I like. And I also write UI tools using JavaFX. Previously, I used to do it with Swing. So writing a JavaFX application is quite a straightforward task, really. The, the, the second part or the next part is, well, providing those binaries or that application to your user. Now, you might think, yeah, that's so easy. I mean, you have already compiled your project and created some sort of binary. Just push it into a website and you're done, right? Well, not necessarily, because once you start to see uh, how your users like to consume binaries, say, for example, if you are an OSX user, you might prefer to use Homebrew. If you are a Linux user, you might prefer to use uh, Snapcraft or RPMs or Debian packages your Windows user then is either Winget, Chocolaty, Scoop, or something else, right? It's not just a binary jar that you produce and then your user should be happy. Related to this task of just making sure that the binary can be uh, released, you also have to huh? craft documentation and release mm -hmm. notes, hit up the uh, crafting all these different packages, such again, Scoop, Chocolaty, and the others, require additional metadata. Some of that metadata can be obtained from your project, but again, it's just a handful of, of, of different formats. So this thing is easy to say, I'm just going to produce a binary and put it uh, somewhere available to my users. But then when you start to see all the different other tools that are available, well, things get complicated. So that was my, my goal. I had a JavaFX application that I wanted to make available to my users. So what I was just waiting for something to happen is figure out how I was going to make the most of all the those three distribution channels. I stumbled into two other tools. One is called Go Releaser. This is all for the Go programming language. And the other is called JBank, which is for uh, the JVM. So Go Releaser takes your Go sources, creates binaries for all matching platforms, and then goes ahead and creates a Git release and a homebrew package and scope and chocolatey and many other things. And it also creates checksums. It can sign the files with PGP and so many other things. Now, this is the tool that I saw and I immediately thought, wow, I want that for Java, but there is no such tool yet. At the same time, I saw JBank, which produces a, a set of binaries as a zip file, a tar file, and jar files, and also pushes those binaries to different distribution channels. 
The same was as I just mentioned with Gorilisa. The way that JVan does it is by crafting specific scripts with Bash and Gradle. So the way that it works is specific to the JVan project. So the author of JBank, Max Anderson, a good friend of mine, we started talking many months ago, and we thought, what if there was a way to use Go Releaser, or if there was a Go Releaser-like tool for Java that looked at all the lessons learned from JBank so that we can adapt what JBank did, but open it up for any other Java project. And this is exactly what JReleaser is. So you can find the project at jreleaser.org. That is the website and contains documentation and links to many things. And uh, so we will continue to see a little more. So what is exactly jreleaser? It's a command line tool that allows you to create releases. You can create a Git release on your typical Git uh, services, GitHub, GitLab, Git, and a few others. And you can also create or package the binaries into different formats for platform specific, specific packagers. And finally, you can announce and release to different communication channels. So this is what happens. You supply, you build your binaries in the way that you currently do it using Ant, Maven, Gradle, or something else, whatever it is. Then you supply those binaries with a metadata model to JReleaser, and then JReleaser can simply say, I'm going to release these things, create a Git release on, on the target Git services. You can also repackage this into the package uh, platform specific uh, packages that you saw earlier, and you can also announce different channels. Now, GoReleaser does everything in one go, whereas JReleaser, we decided to split this into smaller pieces. So this is the full diagram of all the commands that you have to uh, your disposal if you happen to use JReleaser. The full release command, the orange one, does everything in one go. So that actually creates the change log for your project when you want to create a Git release, calculates checksums with different algorithms that you can configure, optionally signs artifacts with PGP signatures that you also configure, uploads to different HTTP servers or j 4 factory, and creates a release on the Git service, GitHub, GitLab, Gitia. If, in the second column, it will prepare the, the manifest and the metadata for different platform spe specific packages. For example, it could be the formula or the cask for, um, for Homebrew, or it can create a Docker file if you want to do uh, Docker images as well, or create the manifest for a scoop and chocolate. Package actually creates the uh, platform specific packager. In this, for in the case for Docker, it creates the image, and for Choco, uh, it will create some sort of binary. And a few other things happens. And publish is where it publishes the actually generated things into the place where it needed to be. Could be additional and git repositories. And finally, the announce step. There are many different communication channels that you can use, such as Twitter, SDK Man. Uh, Microsoft Teams, Mattermost, Slack, of course, all of them. You might notice there is a, a box at the bottom, the black one called Assemble. JReleaser assumes that the binaries are built by other tools, but the Assemble step allows you to build cross-platform JLink releases or um, native image executables using GraalVM. Whether you like to use a different tool to build these native executables or would you like to use JReleaser, it's up to you. The point is that once you have the binaries, then the rest of the operations can work. So in terms, I already mentioned a few services, but here's the whole gamut of services that we integrate with. So if you want to create a Git release, then there is the most typical options, GitLab, GitHub, Gitea, Codework, is a service currently open in, in Europe. I think it might be available also worldwide, which is based on Gitia. And if none of these options uh, work for you, you can also use a generic Git option, uh, such as uh, you can target Amazon or other Git services, but some of the features are not fully available if you use the generic Git option. <laughs> if you want to load binaries, then you have JFrag Factory. 
or any HTTP server that accepts post and put. If you want to create platform-specific packages, there's Homebrew for OS6 and Linux, Chocolaty for Windows, Docker images. You can also package with JBank because JBank supports some sort of, of launching uh, jar files or other sorts of binaries. The scoop is for Windows, as the command is for the three major platforms, RSNAP is for Linux. And in terms of communication channels, well, there you have it. There is, there is definitely more than one. And it's likely that, that if your team decides to use any of these communication channels, then you can simply ping them and send them an announcement. Now, how do you launch the tool? There are a few ways. If you are on OS X or Mac, well, you can install it from SDK Man, or you can use JBank to, to launch the latest version, or you can install it from Homebrew, or you can go to the release page of the project and download a zip file. There are two versions, one that expects you to have a Java runtime that matches the expectations, in this case, it's Java 8, or the standalone version, which is a cross-platform J-Link Java runtime created with JRelease. So you don't need any Java in your, in your environment, it comes with uh, JRelease. For Linux, almost the same instructions. You can use SDK Man, JBank, or download a, a release. Notice that there is a secondary a standalone version uh, with uh, Linux muscle platform. This is useful when running on Alpine Linux because the first standalone works with any JVM. Well, actually, it's a particular JVM that runs on JLibc whereas the other one runs uh, compiled with Muscle. And on Windows, almost the same options, but you also have Scope, right? So you might be wondering, uh, well, these options are maybe very similar. The JRelease happens to be a CLI tool, which is written in Java. It's just like any other Java project that you would like to release. Does JRelease use JRelease to release itself? Yes, since the first release. So all these options that are available to you have been crafted using a model published by a previous version of JRelease. If you want, you can also grab uh, the, <clears throat> the CLI using an executable jar. You can download it from the release page or you can use this simple script, just run it with Java 10 or Java, actually you need Java 11, I believe. Uh, but this feature is available since Java 10. It's a search uh, launch from source file. And what this we think do will just download a Java uh, jar file. And then from there, you can execute the jar file, passing any additional commands. We also have Docker images. There's the latest numbers. Uh, the slim version, this is for based on Ubuntu. And the Alpine version is based on Linux Alpine. Now, these Docker images, uh, do not support packaging uh, for SnackCraft and Chocolaty. SnackCraft, because you require additional tools and additional settings in the image, which we haven't done yet. And Chocolaty requires a Windows image. So, well, no, no dice there. You can run it many ways. Uh, you can run it from the command line as a CLI tool, or you can run it as a Maven plugin, as an Ant task, or as a Gradle plugin. We also support running in CI CD environments. So you can run it locally if you want to, but if you happen to run uh, releases on any of these 14 different options, then you can use JRelease. We have native integration for GitHub Actions because we have um, uh, a git a git of action for JRelease. The others might either rely on the Docker images or downloading the jar file and executing it as is. So we have guides in the documentation telling you how you can use any of these services. So from your point of view, the inputs that you supply to JRelease are the following ones. It's a zip file or a tarball that is created either using, again, Maven, uh, and uh, Gradle, or you can do it by hand. These are typically distributions that contain a launcher script and all the jar files uh, needed to launch the application. You can also pass in a fat jar or an Uber jar that is executable. 
You can pass in a JLink distribution that you created by any other means or using the assembly block from JavaLisa. A uh, Graal native image also created using the assembly block or using the Maven plugin or the Gradle plugin or anything else, other means. And finally, even though the project started as, as something for supporting Java projects, we also support native packages and native executables. Native packages created with JPackage or native executables that are created from any other source file that is not Java. So if you're using, if you're creating a binary with C, C++, Rust, uh, JavaScript, you name it, you can use your release. It. If you happen to use Go, then I will certainly recommend you to keep using Go release it because that provides tighter integration with the Go language. But for any other kind of project, your release it should be fine. Okay, so that's enough of the theory. Now let's get into the exciting part, which is the demo, which hopefully will work and nothing will break today. Uh, so here we go. Uh, let's show the uh, terminal. So before I get that, I have this simple project. It's a Java project that is based on Maven. Uh, we have a Java Lizard model right here. And the only thing that this thing does is, is a simple CLI that outputs, um, I think it's either Hello World or it outputs 42. We can have a quick look into it. What this thing does, it says hello and something. Okay, not very exciting, but it's a Java application, right? So let's go here. Oops, you didn't see that. So let's do a clean so that there is nothing out there, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do now is build the application. And I have set up the application such that it creates zip files and a target C with some distribution. Now, this is just regular Maven. You see the POM file here. It's just gap coordinates, some metadata, this is standard, uh, blah, blah, blah. We start to see uh, the plugins. If I want to execute the, uh, the application from the, from the build, that's fine. Um, I make it executable because uh, there's the jar plugin. Then I create a distribution using the app assembler. This, this is the one that creates the launcher script and puts all the dependencies. In this case, the application doesn't have any, but if it had, it will put everything into one directory called live. And then the assembly plugin, this is the one that creates the zip file and the tar file. And that's the only thing that I do. Okay? So, if I show you again here the Git repository, I have no tags and I have no releases. So here's the first thing that I'm going to do. I have a binary. And I want to create a Git release without publishing any files. Within, notice what's going to happen. I can use jrelease if I already installed it. How can I install it? Remember, I can use SDK man. So let's list the different versions of jrelease. I'm going to use uh, version 06, which is the latest release. We can verify that I have the latest version like that. It is correct. So now I can say jrelease, uh, release, and pass in an additional configuration that says auto config. This will take information from the project itself, from Git, from, from the, uh, the Git di directory and the, uh, the basic metadata. And the next thing I need to do is tell it what version I want to use. Uh, if I remember correctly, should be this one. Okay, so now Jerry Sir starts to work. It says auto configure is on, perfect. Some metadata generates a change log. Then there are no files configured for checksumming or signing or uploading, but releases to this particular URL. Now, if I go back here and do a refresh, now I have a tag and I have a release. Nice. And notice that this is a very trivial change log based on all the commits. And uh, because I have set up my personal token and, and signatures, this is verified. Perfect. Well, this is very plain, right? Let's move now into the model. The model I made it external, but it could have been using um, um, Maven. So there's some duplication perhaps for Maven. There is this, mo this most information is found in the POM file. Okay. Then I have some information based on the actual release. 
So I'm going to release to GitHub. If there's any matching release with that particular tag, I'm going to overwrite it. I want to sign it. When I, when I create a release, I'm going to pass in a discussion and I'm going to give information for formatting the change log. So this will come up later. I'm also going to sign artifacts. I have that configuration with PGP. I want to, not for now, I don't want to configure Homebrew, but notice that just packaging Homebrew with all the defaults is as easy as doing that. So I'm going to disable Homebrew for now. And then these are the distributions. These are the binaries that I want to publish. Uh, you can pass in the actual name or use some sort of placeholders. These look like mustache templates. You might have find them using on, on, on the front end, but you also, we also use that format. So there's a zip file and a tar file. And finally, I'm going to announce to two different channels. Ooh. I'm going to announce to my Discord channel, and I'm going to announce to a solid um, um, form. Now, there is no information about Discord right here explicit because yeah, I'm, I'm using a webhook. Oh, and anyone cool. that has access to the webhook will be able to publish to my Discord server. So I have that information stored in a secret spot that your releaser can understand, which is, you can see it right here. There are many configuration formats. It could be JAML, TOML, JSON. I decided to go with TOML. And now notice what happens. I'm going to, instead of saying autoconfig, I'm going to say JReleaser uh, release. And um, given that I already have the model, this should create a new release. Let's do it. Now is auto, auto configuration is no longer turned on. There is some metadata, checksums the files, signs the files, and then creates the release saying, ah, there are a bunch of assets now being added. And finally, I go out here and do a refresh. And notice that the change to looks much, much better. And uh, here are all the assets the binaries, the, the signature, and the checksums. If I go back here, there's a tag, and I go into discussions, there is the discussion that was just created. This all happens automatically. And you may notice, I am affecting a remote Git repository on my local environment. Of course, you can use uh, GitHub Actions, so if you go here and see a live release, this is just like any other GitHub action that takes one additional input. So I can say, I want to release version 100 or 200, or any version I want to, as long as it matches what Maven creates. Uh, check out, cache Maven, set up Java, build the artifacts. And then I need to use Java 11 to run the action and then just pass in the release action an additional set of secrets. And this makes the, the, the magic happen. One more thing. I'm going to announce now that I made a release. This should post to Discord and to Sulip. So we see these two things because those were the things that were uh, configured in the model. So now that I go here into my Discord channel, I have this announcement that it's been just today, Swiss time. And I go into my Sulip forum, and I have this announcement that is also posted right now, Swiss time. And if I click on that tag, of course, it's going to um, move me to the release that is available on GitHub. Now again, you can do this locally, or you can do this remotely on CI. And the next thing is, if I wanted to release this to GitLab, or GitHub, the only thing that I need to do if I want to be explicit is this. And have this project as a repository on GitLab, matching, well, this is just documentation, but if you want to be really, really uh, explicit, will be that. And the rest of the model is identical. It's exactly the same. It just works. 
And you, again, you can run it manually or you can run it on CI. That is the advantage of using a tool like this that it automates lots and lots of things. There are a series of projects out there that make use of JRelisa. Uh, perhaps uh, the one that I would like to showcase today is called Casey Cuddle. It's a Kafka Connect CLI built with Quarkus and that produces uh, native image executables with Quarkus support. What we want to do is publish the three binaries for Windows, Linux, and Mac using JRelisa. So here is, there is a tag. It's an early access with just one change. And if we look into the assets, there are three binaries, two zip files and one tar GC. These are created using Quarkus. Uh, this project uses Maven. There is no JRelease or JAML file because this project uses the JRelease or Maven plugin. So this is just regular Quarkus stuff. The important bit will be here at the end. Here's the JRelease or Maven plugin, latest version. And uh, we list the different artifacts. We need the targc, the zip file, and the other zip file for OSX. And this, given that we're building binaries, we use GitHub Actions with this workflow to create the different binaries, matching the different uh, OS X, Windows, or Linux. That creates th three different binaries. And this release job collects all the binaries and invokes their release action. Well, actually, it invokes the, uh, the release uh, goal from the Maven plugin. So you see, there are different ways that you can invoke this, uh, whether you are remote or not. One more thing that I would like to showcase before I go back to the slides um, will be the website. So the website contains all the information that is needed for you to understand how the tool came to be and how it can be used. Uh, what are the different types of distributions? So these are the inputs that you provide. Uh, configuring all the different blocks. Let me show you the release block, which is here uh, for GitHub, which is right here. So this is pretty much what we saw earlier, the JAML format. But if you don't like JAML, that's OK. You can use Tomo or JSON or use the Maven DSL or use the Gradle DSL. Every single snippet, it's provided with five different options. You want to know what are the different commands for the CLI? There they are. So for example, there is the full release, which tells you all the different options. Or you want to see the Maven plugin? Well, there you are. And there it is again, full release, the different options, and Gradle and everything else. The guides for all the different CI elements. There you go and so many other things, right? And then finally, some examples showcasing JRelease's release itself. So this is a copy of the release that JRelease uses to create all the different options, such as, well, here's a change log, so that's fine. And here we have assembly for the cross-platform JLink. So that's a bunch of instructions that, create, that uses JDEPS and JLink or the binaries that were created using Gradle because this project uses Gradle the end tasks, the CLI, and again, Docker images that we put into Docker Hub. So it's just one model. And this creates a, a lots of different distributions and binaries that your users can consume. All right. So let's go back to the slides. <clears throat> Andres, I think you have a few questions as well. Okay, so let me check in the chat. Uh, are there any options to load custom code, a plugin to release or announce to internal channels? Um, I thought about it, but that would require um, having explicit support in DSL if you want to use a name it channel. So uh, we have plenty of communication channels and we also support um, the uh, generic webhooks. If the project or the, uh, the communication channel that you want to use uh, will fit with a webhook, then off you go. But if it does not, 
then um, we'll have to figure something out. I, I will have to think about how we can support custom channels without having to add a specific name for it. How configure are the webhook payloads? Um, they are configurable. So if I go back here into, uh, let's stop the slides. So that's the advantage of having the documentation here is that if you go into announce and say custom webhook, then you can pass in the message as is, and notice that it also supports those placeholders. Or you can pass in a file, a message template that can contain much code, more, more information. And uh, it also supports these templates. And pretty much most of the uh, announcement tools that we have here support that this announcement service will either support this or, or the other. So you can definitely uh, configure them. Uh, and I, where is where was the last message on the chat? Which is is the GitHub plugin compatible with GitHub Enterprise? Yes, not only with GitHub Enterprise but also GitLab Enterprise. As long as it's GitHub or GitLab, it supports that protocol. Off you go. You only have to change one thing, which is go here into release and GitHub and make sure that you define the host, which by default is github.com. And you also define the API endpoint that has to match your GitHub enterprise endpoint. The same deal will happen with GitLab. You have to configure the host and the endpoint. So yes, we support those things. All right. Any other more questions? We'll see. Okay, so what's in the future? Um, the current version is 0.6.0. Uh, we have a, like low numbers uh, just because I want I don't want to promise the 1.0 so quickly, but it looks like we are getting there very, very fast. Um, I mentioned that we support generic Git services. It might make sense to support explicitly Bitbucket, Azure, uh, AWS. We'll see that in the future. Uh, additional upload services, I mentioned j Artifactory and HTTP, but it might make sense to push, uh, publish uh, binaries to cloud buckets, such as Amazon S3 or Azure or Oracle Cloud, you name it, any of those uh, cloud services. And just like we do with the assembly step that we can create JLink images and native, native images with crowd, we might be able to also create j package uh, binaries. Um, you can do this outside of JReleaser, maybe manually, Gradle, you name it. But if we do it with the assembly, then we can reuse some of the metadata that is common for, well, these binaries, these packagers, and for the, the project itself. This is still ongoing. And I think that once we have this, this support, we might be able to publish uh, version 1.0.0. One thing that I did not probably forgot to mention is that if we look into J releases build, uh, what is it? We go into GitHub, J releaser. It says that it has seven releases. So all the final releases for, for one up to six, but also has one thing that is called a rolling release or an early access release. Uh, where is it? There we go. This early access release is published every time we make a commit to the, the main branch and reuses the same release model. So the only thing that it changes is the version number and the tag and mark this thing as a pre-release. But the way that this thing is built is exactly the same as how a final release is built. It's just a tiny change in the configuration. So that allows you, and in this case also JReleaser, to publish early binaries whenever you want it. So even though we have not released version 07, you can go here and download any of these binaries matching your expectations and then use the latest version of JRelease. The GitHub action is also configured to pull in the latest version if you have to configure that 
or the early access version or on a specific version. So it's up to you to pick which version you want to use. Okay. So some resources, uh, closing remarks. Again, the website for the project is jerrylizer.org and the, the project is hosted on GitHub, it's fully open source. And uh, if you would like to contribute, that's fine. Yeah, we will certainly welcome uh, your contributions. If you had an idea of a service that is missing integration, such as that question for any other internal communication channel, please open a discussion channel and maybe open an issue or in the base case, or if you want to send us a pull request and we'll see how we can create, uh, integrate that particular contribution. So everything that we have seen today is open source. And uh, if you have not contributed to open source before, it's easy. You find a problem with anything that we saw today or any other open source project that you use in your daily work, file a ticket. That's it. You don't have to send code. Just file a ticket, let the people on the other side know that there is a missing feature or there is a bug or there is something else that's probably not working properly with the project. That's it. If you have the time and the passion, sure, send some code, but it's not a strict requirement. So with that, uh, I thank you very much. And I think that's everything that I wanted to show today. Of course, there are many things that I would like to show given that, well, I have a passion for this tool. And, uh, but uh, we are pretty much almost on time. I think we have like five more minutes for questions in case uh, anyone, anyone else has something else that would like to ask. Hi, Andres. Yeah. Uh, can you actually give us, give us a bit of information on chocolate? Also, I've never heard about it. Uh, I was quite curious as to what, how chocolate and Jerry Lisa also works together. Uh, so how often Jerry Lisa works together with which other tool? Can you repeat that, please? Chocolate, you were mentioning about, right? Chocolate, chocolate yes. Right. So, so, so right now, Jerry Lisa um, can build, well, it creates the manifests that you require for chocolate, but it does not yet invoke the chocolate binary that creates the final package and pushes it to uh, the, the chocolate repository. The reason being is that you will need to run uh, the chocolate binary on, on a Windows machine. Now, we know what it needs to be done, uh, but we have not done so yet, but there is an alternative. You can generate the manifest and the companion files with jRelease using the templates. Publish that to, let's say that you have hosted your project on GitHub. You publish that to a Git repository and use GitHub Actions on a Windows runner to invoke the Choco binary. So this is a little bit more work on your side because you need to configure the GitHub action. And in the future, we will make sure that this will be able to run within JRLisa. This workaround, by the way, is what JBank does. JBank now also uses JRLisa to release itself. And it currently, it supports Choco, and uh, it uses a separate Git repository um, to do this thing. Now, the advantage is that JRLisa can create that repository and avoid, update the Choco repository every time that you push a new release. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank Andre. My pleasure. Uh, I guess I could have share. Uh, if you look here into the JRLisa, whoops. Uh, organization, you see different doc, uh, repositories. There's the repository that contains all the Docker files and the Snapcraft files and the scoop manifest and the homebrew manifest. All these repositories were created by Jerry Lisa itself. And every time that we push a release, a final release, then the contents of these repositories get updated. And if these repositories happen to have additional workflows, then those workflows will trigger as well. So you can set up all your build pipeline the way that you want. Okay, so 
let me reply that, well, I'm quite excited about this tool. It had made, I have achieved my goal of publishing binaries for a JavaFX application and a few other things. And now more people are discovering this tool and, uh, and making sure that they can invoke it in different ways. Again, you can just invoke a full release or, uh, or there are other projects where they say, I will create a Git release on my own, but I want to publish to Homebrew and I want to have checksums. So they use JRelease. Or is the other way around. I want to create the Git release and I don't want to has, uh, take the hassle of using GitHub Actions. And uh, I don't care about the other binaries. I just need the release. And there are others that say, I want to create the release and the announcement, but I don't need any binaries. So you can have the combination of different options as you need it. This is not a one size fits all tool. It's a highly configurable, very flexible tool. So it's up to you if you want to pick it up to decide how you want to make it work. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Andres. Uh, so that was really cool and uh, yeah, lots of good information. I think uh, yeah, Jerome next to me is finalizing his... Uh, oh, no, I can try to... Um, okay, yeah. you want to show it? Um, oh, I will try. Um, normally, if the miracle of technology is working, I would be able to not do it today. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So maybe we just show it. And it's like, <sighs> so we will send you there. That's ah, nice. So we will can see in chat and send it. Yeah, we will send it to the and to the to the meetup group, and we will email it to you personally. Yeah. So. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming. It's very nice to have you again, Andres. And uh, yes, without waiting, we're going to move to our second speaker, who is uh, Dimitri uh, Chuiko. And uh, yeah, so Dimitri is uh, one of the JVM gurus. So he, uh, he used to work uh, at Oracle on the JVM before. Now he's performance architect at Bellsoft, uh, which is one of the most active companies on uh, OpenJDK. So hi, Dimitri. So thanks a lot for joining us. Hi. Great introduction. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so yeah, uh, the floor is yours, Dimitri. So yeah, thanks a lot for coming. And uh, yes, please tell us more about yourself and about your, your talk. All right. Um, so uh, you introduced uh, myself very well. Um, thanks again. Um, we are going to talk about some grail we are going to chase. Uh, and what is it uh, nowadays? We are trying to find effectiveness uh, without uh, making much efforts. Uh, we're trying to uh, make our application, our services, uh, our products, uh, make them perform best uh, or at least better. Uh, and surprisingly, it can be uh, reached relatively easily by uh, some modern tools that we have now. And what I do, uh, I participate in uh, development uh, of one of uh, greatest products in IT history, OpenJDK, which I guess you all uh, use. And our company releases its own binary called Liberica JDK. And it's, uh, Great to hear uh, what Andres just did, uh, uh, what he just presented uh, in the talk, uh, because we use uh, many of the mentioned channels to distribute uh, the JDK. And it's great that uh, we have um, such, you know, uh, distribution channels, platforms uh, where we can uh, provide software builds and uh, SDKs as well. I mean, SDK man, same chocolatey, all, all them. So it works together very well. And yeah, my colleagues uh, do a great job uh, of contributing to OpenJDK and that's what we do daily. If we talk about effectiveness, uh, modern standard de facto is uh, the usage of containers or at least virtual machines, but we know that we all migrate to containers. 
And we try to make them more effective. Um, my previous talks were about uh, how uh, OpenJDK handled uh, this new reality. Uh, and now it starts started to work very well in containers by default, out of the box. We just take it and it works great. Typically, if you look at uh, some container that we produce manually or some tool uh, does it uh, for us, it is a layered one. So we have layers uh, to uh, make our updates faster because we can update only layers that uh, changed. So, uh, of course, uh, it's a layer with some OS libraries. Uh, some packages that we need to run the uh, cherry. We need then the cherry itself. Maybe we need some other uh, OS packages for our application. That's the second part. And then, of course, Java libraries, all the classical stuff, some maybe framework. And then the tiny part, the tip of the iceberg, where our business logic lives. Uh, Here's another picture, what happens if we uh, create native images. Sometimes uh, they may be even based on the scratch image because the nature of native image assumes that we put everything together and we can link some additional libraries. So it's basically simpler, uh, but uh, we cannot split it to layers. Otherwise, we will lose uh, in performance. Why? Because we'll have uh, dynamic uh, dependencies. And for example, such thing uh, as inlining won't be possible. So uh, uh, the nature of static compilation, if we compile two parts statically uh, distinct from each other, then you know we don't inline. We just uh, combine them dynamically. Uh, I will mention uh, a couple of examples uh, based on Spring, both. And um, first, we can take uh, uh, go to, for example, Spring Initializer and create a simple service. And as I mentioned, uh, the part that actually performs uh, and uh, is a point for some customization for our code. Is, it's very small. If we assemble a thin jar and libraries, uh, then libraries will take uh, approximately the same uh, amount uh, of disk space as a fat jar, like 37 uh, megabytes in this example. And our logic will take like three kilobytes. You see, it's a very small tip of an iceberg. And this is a, just a regular service, nothing unusual. We just need some database connection. We'll uh, use Spring Boot uh, on bulk. It's very simple. And about a year ago, uh, I noticed two interesting polls uh, in one of the conferences. And I think it is still a valid picture uh, except uh, the share of uh, cloud native build packs usage. Uh, my guess that it is growing. I think we'll definitely uh, repeat uh, such polls uh, this year. And it, it's very interesting uh, what, uh, what has changed. But for now, I still, uh, that would be uh, the major difference. And you see, uh, many of us still create Docker files manually, still describe uh, how our containers, uh, what, what's the layout there. And uh, surprisingly, uh, the share of uh, classical deployments is still very big. Like, uh, I mean, bare metal, virtual, uh, virtual machines, uh, wire deployments, it's, it's still huge. Uh, but uh, cloud native build packs uh, is a growing uh, point here. If I talk about uh, base and parent images, I will uh, switch uh, between the terms. Uh, so 
for us uh, who create uh, JDKs, you know, uh, the base image is an image that is capable of running some Java program. So it's an image with JDK. And that JDK can be embedded into that image in a different ways. Some obvious uh, step is to install it as a package from your underlying operating system layer. Uh, sometimes that may be a package uh, that uh, is acquired from some external repository. So you first plug in a repository and then uh, you uh, install a package from that repository. That sometimes has some advantages. And that may be a binary installation. In all the cases, uh, it would be good to be sure in the compatibility. So something you install, that it will work well. It sounds obvious, but we'll look at a few examples uh, where this assumption breaks. So let's finally try something. Let's try some image. Okay, I need OpenJDK, I get it. But um, for example, my network, that's my home network, it's rather fast, but I have to wait for a half of a minute to get that image. That's a lot to me. So I, I can show a couple of slides during the time. That's, that's not fast. Why? Because I really transfer a lot of data. I wonder, it can be even estimated from the time that you saw, you know, the speed of the network. So then this image is uncompressed on disk. It takes more than half of a gigabyte. Well, why? I only need Java to run some Java programs. Is that right? No, I don't think so. And especially it is not right that I have a lot of machines and some actions may be cheap, like, Network transfer may be well, like free in some clouds if you don't cross the region size. But if you do cross that or uh, have some other penalty, like for example, you share your machine and you, your disk is already full and you get additional disk, you have to pay for it. That may be slow, that may be expensive. And you know, if I deploy something, for not so many machines, I have a quarter of a terabyte flying around. Doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right. So here, obviously, smaller containers. If we deploy a classic in a classical way, if we use JVMs and we need smaller containers to JVMs, they will help us. Well, we can go and search for some small container, and we'll find few ones, probably many ones. So how to choose between that alternatives? How to compare them? Well, we can compare size, right? Like take two options and you see one option div Java 8 is smaller than another and uh, it's the difference is quite uh, impressive, but we took the latest versions of that containers and the smaller one, it doesn't have the latest version of Java. Uh, moreover, it contains uh, the version of Java that is about a year old. That means all security updates and some features are missing. And that may be really critical. For example, I need uh, to enable a flight recorder, but that is uh, for a long time, is in, it is an open JDK, right? It's available for us. I, I, have, I like to use it and I cannot enable it in some uh, container images because uh, they, they contain so the version of uh, JDK that is old, that uh, JFR is just not there. From another hand, uh, we can take what uh, frameworks offer for free. So they contains uh, they contain um, plugins, for example, for Maven, that build containers for us. 
and you just uh, issue and maybe a Gradle uh, command line, and you get uh, a container in your local repository after that. And what's even better, it's already layered. So you have uh, separate layers for your JDK, for your application, and even your application is split it into layers with libraries. So here uh, the example is uh, Spring Boot, and we just issue a build image command. And now uh, the very same command uh, can be used to build image diff JVM and to build an image container image diff a native image of your application. So uh, how to switch between them? Typically, if we use uh, some uh, part of POM XML file derived from uh, what samples offer us and archetypes, uh, there is a property, actually environment variable that you can uh, switch the true and false. That says uh, do we build native image or do we build a container the JVM. So we just uh, used uh, out of the box thing and got the container that's not half of a gigabyte, uh, but just uh, less than 300 megabytes. Good, isn't it? We just saved uh, a lot of disk space and we say saved uh, full time. Inside, every such image contains an OS layer, as I mentioned. And there are multiple options. There are many options which OS layer to choose, especially if you build it uh, yourself. You pick some OS image or you create it. And their size, for example, is very different. And they even are based on a different uh, C libraries and they have different package managers. And I guess uh, it's good also to have some shell to perform some diagnostic, some maybe control uh, to run additional scripts. And there's one special one, Alpine Linux, that is extremely small. And it contains standard C library, package manager, and content shell. And it's even smaller than something called distroless, which is uh, a small thing uh, created from a real uh, OS distribution by cutting off package manager and shell. So to run uh, J JVM on uh, such small and special OS, we need to port it there, and it has been done. They've drop uh, free uh, to six, and it is it was maintained in a project Portola in OpenJDK, uh, where our company participated, and also it has been started by Oracle. And now you have it in JDK sixteen. What, uh, what it means is that if you look at OpenJDK repository, if you look at the main branch, it's there. But that doesn't mean you cannot have it uh, as a binary for earlier JDKs. So a few companies uh, released binaries uh, for few releases. And those binaries and containers are much smaller, obviously as you saw the uh, base OS uh, layer size, so the same difference is for resulting container. And if you pull that, it doesn't take uh, half of a minute, it takes just a few seconds. So you say BAMS and you have uh, OpenJDK on your machine, which you can experiment with and you can uh, create container uh, based on that. And it's cool. If you have CI and you provision new machines, it's instant. Wait, uh, I've shown, uh, of course, uh, some examples with Liberica, but uh, it's not the only one, uh, not the only container image uh, that uses Alpine, for example. Uh, it uses Alpine muscle, uh, but you see, for example, 
20k8 and uh, look at its size again. You see, there are options. Why is there is such a big difference? Uh, why America is not smallest? Uh, is there a problem? Uh, well, the technique of making uh, the JDK even, even smaller uh, is obvious. Uh, it is to compress uh, some jars uh, that uh, libraries, standard libraries in JDK. And for JDK 8, those uh, are not modules, not JMOD files. Uh, they are really uh, jars. So you can compress it. Well, and you will have an impression difference uh, in the uncompressed size. But first of all, you will have startup penalty because you have to uncompress that. Then you read uh, classes from the jars. And this uh, startup penalty is solvable, but still you will have worse uh, wire size, then you transfer uh, and compress already compressed jars. You will have worse uh, and larger size than the uh, JDK, the uncompressed jars that has been compressed once. And then you transfer uh, JDK layer, uh, the compression is applied. Some other interesting options. Well, we, many of us, uh, love a sync profiler for real um, fine grain profiling of your applications, allocations, CPU profiling. So it's that easy. You can tune your container to support it. Then you try to profile something, right? You run your Java application, you get the process ID, and you connect your profiler. And it just shows you nothing. It basically shows that many things happen in JVM, but it doesn't tell you what really happens. And if you take uh, the distribution that has the box symbols, you actually know that, for example, you have a warm up phase and your C2 compiler is working here. And it's not a big deal. You just need so like uh, uh, for the uh, thousand uh, symbols that's they don't take much space you just need to be careful about uh, how your uh, jdk is prepared for profiling so as i mentioned jdk 8 is available while the code of portal approach has been merged on the timeline of jdk 16 as well as jdk 11 builds are available uh, in multiple distros, you can just try it. And the same is for ARM. If you have an ARM server or some other kind of machine to try, like MacBook, uh, for example, go on and take your native uh, ARM binary. What about Alpine itself? It also contains open DDK package, but uh, Distros doesn't care that much about uh, building and making OpenJDK uh, packages polished as JDK vendors. It's funny, but uh, you can, uh, for example, install uh, OpenJDK there and try to use a JCMD command, and it just won't work. Well, it's there. You can try and invoke it using full path and we'll make something basic. Try to uh, figure out what's the uptime of some running JVM. And instead we'll have a uh, thread dump. Well, because something was not done properly during the build process. So your application basically works, but this diagnostic uh, option just doesn't work. Why? Well, just take uh, the right uh, base image and everything works out of the box. You have JCMD and your VM uptime command gives you what's expected. 
we all know that uh, using uh, public Docker registry sometimes, and especially for the past year, it became, it has some pitfalls. Uh, it's fast. That's the great advantage. It's free, uh, but there are limits. Uh, and you actually have a, a different option. First, uh, you can make a repository inside your uh, organization network that uh, will act as a proxy or you even um, may use a local repository for everything. Just if you started from something, for example, from scratch and you don't need other images, well, that's great. Uh, or you can, from time to time, uh, pull some uh, layers, images uh, from the public Docker Hub. Or you can connect uh, to private repositories using the same way. Oh, that's the early access option. Uh, you can go there or you may not go if you wish. Uh, the trusted registry is basically, uh, it, it works uh, very similar to public Docker Hub. You just need uh, a credential that's a mandatory thing. And then you get uh, some nice additions. For example, in our case, uh, we provide uh, early access binaries there and commercial customers, they get uh, binaries built specially for them. Uh, there are cases, uh, for example, then you need a hotfix and this is a channel of distribution, a private channel uh, to deliver a prepared uh, base image that is uh, fixed and tested JDK to some customer. And we also experimented uh, the early access builds uh, by adding some optimizations there and providing uh, them uh, using the same channel. Like for example, uh, extra size uh, decrease that we reached uh, the latest releases, especially for JDK 11. Uh, but not just that, also some latency improvements. And the thing that I like uh, to show most, uh, it's uh, decreased memory footprint. So when you take some very well-known application and start it and do nothing. It's a very simple test. Uh, it's pet clinic, um, no matter which uh, flavor of it. And we have optimized JDK. There's some, this is a JDK 11. There's some extra backports, good ones that make uh, it uh, consume less memory. So you see uh, the footprint decreased uh, more than uh, 150 megabytes. And we just did nothing. We just changed uh, the base image for our uh, container and it started to consume much less memory. So as I mentioned, uh, there are options uh, to choose from. And then we uh, built our container image, it may be uh, a JVM based image, or it may be uh, a native image container. Uh, native image has its own advantages and disadvantages, like for example, uh, diagnostic, diagnostic tools that we use to, they are not available. We need slightly different approach for diagnostics, uh, longer build times, uh, closed world assumption, we need special, sometimes special versions uh, for different components that uh, we have as a dependencies. So it's sometimes complicated, but we have advantages such as smaller uh, container uh, size. And we have, uh, it is a single binary. But if we choose traditional JVM, uh, we also have options. How do we work the OS layer? Uh, which package manager do we prefer? Uh, is Muscle fine for us? Not just to but uh, 
muscle. If GDPC is a must, then again, which package manager do we prefer? Uh, what uh, distro flavor is best for us? We have to choose. And if we continue to uh, talk about native images and static compilation, there was an attempt to bring, uh, to bring static compilation to help uh, application startup in JDK. But now uh, this feature is being removed from JDK. Uh, it will be removed from JDK 17, I guess. Uh, I mean, the feature called. So there are no more new Graal compiler drops to open JDK source. So if you look uh, at OpenJD Git, GitHub, uh, the uh, Graal code, Graal module is still there, but it's not updated. Uh, the part is being developed is JVMCI because it's still used by GraalVM. It's still used by other tools. So the interface is there. It's still experimental, but it's being developed. So that's an interface for plugin in the crowd. And then we can think of uh, different Graal VM assemblies. Uh, there are uh, assemblies by Oracle, uh, basically uh, free Graal VM uh, community edition, available for uh, a couple of platforms. And also uh, a Graal VM Enterprise Edition with the same license uh, as Java C. And it contains additional optimizations. Uh, but you can uh, try, evaluate it, and decide uh, if you really need that for your production. And there's one more interesting assembly uh, that is based um, not uh, on the Graal VM, a special VM assembly, but it's based on the Berica JDK. And we provide it uh, to cover uh, that niche of uh, native image and native image containers, uh, because we believe that uh, the variety of choices that I shown you, it, it's better to have it covered with uh, support from uh, JDK and compiler vendor. And we also see that uh, there are platforms uh, that many uh, users are interested in, like uh, working on muscle, working on arm, and we still make it uh, possible to use extra languages for native images uh, using that uh, tool. So what's the difference? Uh, you cannot use uh, them dynamically in a JVM mode, but you use them in a native image. So we made some efforts uh, in GraalVM project to make uh, Alpine Linux support uh, more production ready, uh, more complete. Uh, that was for extra languages, uh, for running uh, the compilation process on the Alpine Linux and uh, usage uh, and running uh, the resulting uh, native image on the Alpine Linux platform. So it's very easy to take that uh, tool. You just go to the download page and get it. Uh, and let's discuss uh, some other tiny example, which is again, you see, if you build a jar for classical JVM, the iceberg T part is very small. Libraries part is still huge. So it takes like 17 megabytes if it's a jar, but we can enable uh, support for native images. In this case, it's Spring. We'll need a few components. Uh, 
we will need a special plugin that performs some actions before running uh, in uh, before running your applications. So uh, this is a Spring AOT Maven plugin, but AOT here doesn't mean the compilation. Uh, it really means uh, some code generation and generation of configuration, everything that can and must be done ahead of time before running your native image compiler. Uh, you will also need Spring Native plugin to handle all the dark magic, uh, taking away all the complexity of turning and invoking other plugins and turning your code into native, into native image. The optional dependency here is uh, a dependency for manually running a plugin from GraalVM team. You can use only that. For example, in your some simple Java projects, you can enable this plugin and turn them into native images. But with complex ones, uh, like something that's based on IFC containers or dynamic proxies or whatever, which is not trivial for native image. And I guess that's anything rather complex or complex enough to work with databases, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something did a lot of code. So you can use, uh, you have to use uh, more sophisticated configuration. And that's handled behind the scenes uh, with some custom plugins, but you still can uh, invoke the final uh, stage uh, using uh, the original uh, native image Maven plugin. And you can also uh, specify an exact version of it here. And uh, in my example, I declared some profile uh, to uh, work there. So flexibility here is that uh, we can invoke that profile optionally. And as I mentioned, we can also plug in build packs, which will ease uh, all the container work for us. And if you now uh, state that we will create native images by providing uh, such uh, a property. And we invoke the same uh, Spring Boot build image command and we get an image, the native container image, the native image of the application uh, as a result. But for fle the flexible build, we can also use extra options. We can control which exact version of uh, native image tool are we using. Like here, we uh, take some exact version of Liberica Native Image Kit. And we can use, for example, Alpine Linux. So here we tune the Alpine environment for the build and we create the resultant image that will work also in Alpine environment. We can just run it. And this environment is super tiny. So we don't have that, you know, 100 megabytes uh, plus. 37 megabytes, we have only seven plus 5.6. And the resultant image starts in 120 for the second. It is much faster than a blink of an eye. Uh, that's the grail option for us. We can make our application to start that fast and to take that uh, tiny container space well, sometimes native image is a complex. It takes long to compile it, but we have great advantages. One of them is again a footprint. So you remember they saved uh, a lot of uh, memory by using uh, extra optimizations in JVM, but if we switch to native image, we save it even more. Just we did nothing with our code. We just changed the configuration, the day how we built the result an artifact, and it takes slightly over 100 megabytes in memory. Super small. 
Yeah, you can just try it. Or you can try Spring Native. You heard the announcement that now uh, Liberican Eek is the default assembly uh, for Spring Native if we uh, use uh, build packs to build containers. Um, thank you. I will switch to questions now. Okay. Do we have any questions? Uh, we don't have questions in chat. Yeah. Please ask. Maybe Dimitri, I have a question. Um, how is the process for the contributions to open JDK? Like, is it like completely open source, like any normal open source project, or is it uh, like you guys do much requests and all that kind of stuff, or it's a bit different? Uh, it was uh, um, more different than regular. Uh, so every project has its, you know, uh, way of uh, development. Now it's uh, all on GitHub. Uh, there's additional tooling around that, uh, but you can come with a pull request. Uh, one thing that we, you will need uh, is a special agreement. It's called OCA, Oracle Contributors Agreement, signed by a company or by an individual. Uh, that, okay, uh, you work uh, 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 in the very same way as all others in the community. Uh, it, it's 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 really not complex. If you wish to contribute, uh, you can uh, sign the OCA and go to the pull request, or you can send uh, your patch uh, to mailing list. That's also fine. Thanks. I think we have one more question from Anbu. Uh, I see there is two versions of Nick Core and Nick Standard. Can you share the difference? Also, the recent announcement of the VMware Spring Native, what to expect in future? Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I like to mention that announcement, of course. Uh, and uh, Nick Core is a version instantly prepared uh, for creating native images from your Java programs. It's not magic, uh, it's uh, the version diff a native image tool installed and uh, other tooling stripped off. So it's just slightly optimized to be ready for creating native images from Java programs out of the box. You can take standard version, standard uh, packager, and uh, install a native image tool there in a very regular way for all uh, GraalVM derived uh, things. You just uh, type GU uh, install native image, and it's there. Uh, except uh, everything is downloaded uh, from the same uh, binary repositories as uh, Nick itself. Um, uh, what to expect in future? Uh, we have uh, more uh, thoughts on how to improve experience uh, with uh, Alpine Linux. It sounds very interesting to many users and we do like it. So we started uh, experiments a few years ago with JVM and we like to continue that. Some other tools around JVM, uh, but they are not related uh, directly to Spring. Like we have uh, Liberica Administration Center. Uh, but for Spring Native, we expect some bugs. So that's not just uh, something about having our binary uh, by default uh, in this great framework, but we also uh, back it with support. So if something breaks, uh, in some company's environment, uh, we will fix that. And we have um, more interesting uh, thoughts about using native images, for example, for uh, UI development, 
uh, creating uh, some binaries. So again, I like very much how Andres uh, uses uh, JavaFX. So that's also an interesting uh, direction here. Yep. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Dimitri. I think we are reaching the picture time. So yeah, that's uh, it will be so. more visible at one point. We will send it to you. <laughs> we try to summarize it. Right. Yeah. So yeah, thanks very much, Dimitri, for joining. Thanks everyone. Thank you, uh, yeah, it has been a while, and we yeah we hope to see you next time, probably in a couple of months. We have our next event. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Dimitri. Thanks, Andreas. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Well, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hasta la próxima. Hasta la próxima. Yes. Hasta la próxima.